Hey, everybody. I'm so excited for you. You are going to get so much out of this podcast. I truly haven't been this excited. I was going to take my glasses. Off. Um, <laughs> I haven't been this excited about a podcast in quite some time. My guest is somebody I know. I've known her for years now. She's been in my masterminds. We are, we are friends. She and her husband, Vince, are dear to my heart. Yeah. I love them. I trust them. I enjoy being with them every chance we can get. And you're going to get to know Anita Anello really well on this, on this podcast. She's a dynamic speaker. She's a coach. She's a kingdom-based entrepreneur. And I have seen her go through a dramatic <laughs> transformation in recent months. And it's amazing. It's exciting. And I think you're going to be blown away. I don't say that lightly. Prepare to be blown away by what we're going to learn as we talk with Anita. And let's, um, if you don't mind, Anita, I want to jump in and talk about that transformation. Yeah. What happened to you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you know, Ray, like I've given testimony to you all the time, and I say this on a regular basis because it is so, it's almost like I can't, I don't know, it's just, it's like I've woken up the me inside of me almost like times three and I'm having more fun in my business now with being able to deliver like high ticket offers and virtual events than I've had in like the last five and a half years. So we're going to dive into that. We're going to teach some people today, um, help people, a couple people get like set free right now in Jesus name as we have our conversation is going to be total fire and so much fun. So get ready, get your notebooks ready as you're, as we're going through the session, go ahead and we're going to do a little bit of call and response. You can call out some things in the chat and join us along in the conversation as we just talk about, and really what we want to do today, we want to bring incredible value. Ray and I have been um, gosh, we've been, just been friends and partnering in this um, this endeavor right now to be able to just bring you guys as you listen so much value. So just get ready. Uh, it's almost like your, I would say, like your hair is going to be blown off right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's what Maybe happened. Not to my me. hair. <laughs> that's, that's how this happened. I, oh, I met gosh. I met Anita and um so. How did, how did you get started? Let's, yeah. let's start with the beginning. Oh, okay. So um, just a quick backstory, not to belabor it too much, but really I used to be in the corporate space. I was super successful in my career as a software executive. And then I transitioned to be at home, homeschooling my kids. Loved that. Loved both of those seasons in my life. Great, made, uh, made great money in the midst of that, but my heart's desire was to be home. Um, homeschooling my kids for a season. And then about five years ago, we're still a homeschooling family, but about five years ago, some things kind of started to stir. So I started dabbling around in some businesses, some online businesses, an Amazon business, a coaching business. About that time, Ray, you and I met, and I really started to hone in on the coaching skills that I already had, like from 20 plus years of consulting with big companies and 10,000 or more clients and that kind of stuff. And what was interesting is about two years ago, my husband and I went through a season in our life. Can somebody say a season that was not amazing? We had a situation in our household that I can smile about it now, but let me tell you, it was pretty challenging. We had a situation in our household. We went in about a six to eight week period. We went from a marriage upset to a medical crisis to actually another piece of the story that I'll tell a little bit later. But Really, one of the things that happened is um, my husband, Vince, went in for an outpatient procedure and ended up in the emergency room about an hour later and then spent the week in the cardiac wing. And could you imagine like so at this point in time, just to give you a frame of reference, his income was covering the bulk of our household and my income was like small and kind of was dabbling in a bunch of things, but I hadn't really like dialed some things in in my business. And so um, we kind of hit this bump in the road. Uh, where all of a sudden there was like, oh, wait a minute, like financially, can you imagine? And medically and just spiritually and relationally, there were all these things going on that created, just created a whole lot of chaos inside of us. And so, and I'll come back to that story a little bit later. Um, but really what that did is it helped us, it helped me to kind of develop a process and start really digging in deeper and studying 
what it meant to be a successful businesswoman. And in the context of my household, what was going on, Ray, is um, my husband was in a medical situation that he actually needed to come home and heal for a while. Uh, you can imagine if you go to the emergency room, it's not like a oh my gosh, everything's better. No big deal. No hospital bills. No nothing. Wasn't it? it was like the oh, opposite of that. I remember when yeah. this was happening, and I told a couple of people on my team, I'm like, oh man, I'm worried about it. yeah Vince and Anita. I don't know what's going to happen, and it was yeah. it was not the greatest of times. It was it was pretty intense. I can remember just really uh, like transparently and candidly, I can remember wrestling with God in the middle of the night and reminding him, like you promised me certain things in life. And I'll, for anybody who's listening, let me kind of give you some framework. I'm going to talk in the framework of God. If that's not where you're coming from, that's totally fine. Just it's okay. You be you and I'll be me. But the framework for my life is is really wrapped around God. And so I remember wrestling and struggling with this conversation, the situation of like, okay, what am I going to do with my kids? How am I going to homeschool? How am I going to take care of my family? Like there just were all these questions and it just caused me to have a complete um, breakdown in the middle of the night. And then I remember there was like, like that, it was like something that had shifted. And I started declaring some different things of like, okay, Lord, I know that I know that I know that you promised me that my life would be different than what it looks like right here, right now in the natural. Um, and, and again, we'll cover that a little bit more as we go on in the story, but we'll kind of just pause right there and kind of get back to the really like the topic at hand that we're talking about today. Yeah. Okay. So there's so much, Yeah. Um, so much I want to talk to you about. Yeah. So the, first of all, I'm going to go straight to the money. Because this is what I know. Uh, money isn't everything, but it helps everything. Yeah. And it makes a real difference. And money's really great at solving the problems only money can solve. Yeah, that's right. And, and I, I, for those who've been around me, I mean, I wrote a book about as believers in Christ and God, we have permission to prosper. That's we right. operate out of the same framework. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm all about helping people prosper. And I know you are too. And yeah. you're doing some amazing things. I like we'll, we'll, we'll get to six figure and seven figure days. Yeah. <laughs> but tell me, you got this framework where you walk with people through the process of creating enormous financial abundance. Can I just say that? Yeah. Big piles of money. Mm -hmm. And it's called the elite entrepreneur event formula. Yeah. What is that? What the heck is that, Anita? Yeah. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. It's essentially a simple framework that helps us get past where we're stuck in our businesses, like 10 to 20 K months and get on to six and seven figure. It's up to you. You can either do six and seven figure months or days, whatever you choose in your business. So if you start to kind of like have that marinate, um, in your brain about what is totally possible. Um, like I have an offer in my business. We're not talking about that here, but just, just to kind of set the framework, I now have an offer in my business where I do a VIP day for clients and that's a 250 K offer. And I do that on a one-to-one -one basis, but see how the, uh, all of a sudden somebody's mind is getting blown as we're talking here, because you start to really understand what's possible. Now I'll go through the details of that. I don't just arbitrarily assign a specific number. There's some real specific things. So there's two things we want to focus on here. There's some specific things that need to be in your offer in order for them to qualify as a high ticket offer. There's also specific things that high ticket buyers are looking for. If they don't see these in your offer, then they're actually like, oh, no, no, like you're not my person. I'm actually not going to go in your direction. So these are some of the things that we're going to kind of break down a little bit further. So I want to, I'm excited about this because I want to frame this correctly. Yeah. Um, I want people to get the full impact of what you're talking about. Cause I've seen you go from financial, um, uncomfortable. Yep. You could say maybe a little frightening mm -hmm. to sudden explosive financial abundance. And I've seen your, your demeanor go from, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing okay. 
then suddenly you're like a different person. You're like, everything's amazing. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm excited about sharing with people. So whatever business you're in, I'm just going to say this, whatever business you're in, this is the key to getting away from struggling to prospering. I mean, really, I mean, imagine being able to not go fly back home and see your dozen relatives for the holidays, but fly them all to where you are. Oh, yeah. And put them up in a different building so they won't drive you crazy. But, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just a different way of living. Yes. To think that you could have. If you're, so you mentioned some numbers that I know are mm -hmm. kind of trigger points or marker points for people who listen to this show and who yeah. write to me stuck at 10 to 20 K a month, even yeah. stuck at 50 K a month. Mm -hmm. You can go so far beyond that. You'll begin to see 50 K as I'm stuck. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. That is exciting. I know. I know it is. It is. So there's kind of something that we want to let's talk about a little bit about like the process. So, you know, so if it's OK with you, I'm just going to dive in a little bit deeper yeah. into like understanding the process. So here's what we hear from, I'll say, like a lot of online gurus and love them, love where their hearts are at. I love their perspective. And I bought into this for a really long time. There's kind of like this sequence that we hear in the marketplace. Right. Ray, is that start out with a little offer the lead magnet, the free thing and all that kind of stuff. Or I don't know, maybe I have like a heart to do a nonprofit or a ministry or whatever, but then work my way up to like a 297 offer or a 597 offer or a 997 offer or like the granddaddy of it all, like a 1997 offer or something like that. So that's, if you're not familiar with that, I know you guys are all copywriters, so this is probably not news to you, but that's what's called a value ladder. And what typically is told to us in the online market space is that the sequence. So the sequence is we go up the ladder one step at a time. And as we're going up the ladder one step at a time, we're going from our smallest offers to our largest offers. Now you might have an offer if you're listening today that's higher than like 2K and that's amazing. Well, that's like a great starting point. And then I'm gonna kind of explode your mind and show you what else is available. But see what happens is if we don't understand that we actually are able to like flip that sequence then a whole new world actually opens up. See, Ray, when I start with like a high ticket offer and I'll talk to you about some of the elements that have to be in the high ticket offer in order for them to be successful and to convert. But if we flip that value ladder and instead of it going up from small to large, we actually flip it on its head and go from high to low. Then we have amazing things happen in our business. Number one, revenue events start to happen. Number two, we can like take a breath in our household because our household budget starts to change. Number three, we have the ability and the margin to go and do some of the things that we want to do when we go back down the ladder and maybe serve more at scale. We know that there's all these buzzwords that are out in the marketplace and we have lots of friends. You and I have lots of friends that subscribe to this method of being able to say, start small and work your way up. Can I tell you that every person that's running Facebook ads successfully out in the marketplace, they have some form, I can guarantee it, they have some form of high ticket offer on the back end that actually is paying for all of those ads. If you've ever tried to run Facebook ads and you have paid the tuition of testing out a Facebook ad and it didn't really work, I've totally done that multiple times, it's kind of a painful way to actually, and I'm like stretching my arms because it reminds me of when I'm working out. I'm like, ah, the pain. This is like the not good kind of pain that we have when we run Facebook ads. But we'll dive into that a little bit later. But if you can see that we can switch the sequence and um, when we do, we start at high tickets and then we actually descend our clients down the ladder so we can go from the highest paying, highest converting, highest value that we're transferring to our high ticket clients, serve them at the highest level. I call it the Ritz Carlton level of service. I love Ritz Carlton, Four Seasons. Those are my kind of places. When I'm yeah. there, I want to be served at the highest level. And I expect because I'm paying that high dollar amount that I'm going to get a completely different experience than if I stay down at the Holiday Inn. So I'm not knocking the Holiday Inn, um, but it's not where I started my business. So can you see how when we don't understand that what's possible in our business, that instead of going up the ladder, we can actually go 
down that value ladder, it's like a whole new world opens up. So it's not that those things are wrong. What I'm trying to do is help somebody see that the sequence is out of order. It's not that the steps are wrong, is that we're running in the wrong order. Now, what happens when the sequence is wrong, Ray? Um, things like our businesses run really, really slow. Things like it takes a really, really long time to reach our revenue goals. Things like it might be personally, financially painful for you and your household. Things like it can be exhausting to have these long delivery events. Like how many of us have created a course that um, people buy, but they ask for returns, they don't do the work. And then, um, I don't know, 12 months later, like they'll say, I didn't get transformation. And so then there's no actual testimonies to come out. Yeah. Usually they say that around Christmas time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's what we call the Christmas refund wave. Yeah. Um, can, you, can, I, can, we, I just, can we can we like allow ourselves the permission to get away from building businesses for ourselves that are exhausting? Yeah, yeah. My brother works for me in, in our company, works with me. That's a better way to say it. It's more the truth. Mm -hmm. Um because he's a very independent man. He doesn't work for anybody yeah. except as himself, but he does a great job. And he said to me one day after he'd been here for a year or so, he said, Ray, you're like the Rube Goldberg of marketing. <laughs> if you don't know, Rube Goldberg was the guy who invented all those crazy contraptions where it's like a ball rolls down a string and it rolls into a tube. It hits a, a, a flywheel that knocks a hammer that knocks a, of marble into a bucket. It's like this super complicated way of getting the door to open. Mm -hmm. That's what he was saying. He said, Ray, you, you're the Rube Goldberg of marketing. You make it so hard for people to get to the end. And that's a lesson that's been very powerful for me. Yeah. If you can just get people the result they want, they don't care about all that stuff in the middle. Yeah. And high ticket buyers, if we have time today, we will. If not, we'll talk about it later. But high ticket buyers are, they have a different mindset when it comes to the complexity versus simplicity. So oh, yes. we'll kind of touch on that in a little bit, but it's a different world out there. Giving them more does not actually um, justify raising the price because there's not necessarily more value that comes from more deliverables. Right, right. Because of this old teaching this old school teaching of the thud factor. Well, the thud factor is somebody pays me a thousand dollars. I send them a box full of books and binders and CDs. Remember CDs? Yeah. yeah. They, they were a thing really. They send this box. It's so heavy. It makes a thud when the UPS guy drops it on your porch. That's thud factor. And nobody wants that. Nobody says, yeah, send me 2000 pages of stuff to go through. Mm. They just want the result they're after. I know. Yeah, you can see behind me, like I have, I have, I've read thousands of books and I love books. But can I say that it wasn't necessarily reading a book that got me the results, what I'm talking about today and what Ray and I are talking about? Like books are amazing. They help us in the process, but they're not what we're, it's, it's not, you need to read another 12 books or something like that. And then, then you're going to go do the things that we're talking about here. Amen. So let's, let's cross and roll. What's next? Okay. So would it be okay if I just kind of start to dive in a little bit deeper into how we have high ticket clients, like ready to pay us a fortune without having to be, I'll put, even put it this way, without having to be like experts at copywriting, like Ray Edwards is, or experts at ads or experts or like giant audiences or giant followings or anything like that. Would it be okay that I actually dive in a little bit deeper and kind of talk about the system? Okay. Yeah. I would love that. And I would like to just plant this seed for you to think about. Um, I know a lot of folks listening to this or watching this are going to be thinking, I, I don't know. How can I possibly charge high ticket? It's different numbers for different people, but it's, it's a lot of, there's, there's some number which everybody says, Whoa, I couldn't charge that much. Mm -hmm. because, boy, so you're going to, you're going to get to that too, right? I am. I am. So the framework for what we're talking about here, the marketplace might inform us that a high ticket offer is anything around the 2K or above range. 
In the world that I swim around in, we're talking about 10K and above types of offers. So that gets a framework for what we're talking about. There's absolutely, I know people, we, Ray and I, you and I know people that have million dollar offers and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm not there yet, but I want to be there. I mean, yes, what you said is correct. That It's not so much about the price point. We were going to just basically sell at your level of conviction. Like whatever that number is for you, start there and work your way up. But what I want to do here is kind of start to break down the system a little bit more so that we start to understand what's possible for each of us in our businesses. And then we just start there. Okay. Let's go. All righty. So a couple of things that I want to be able to break down for you. So there's something called the four levels of wealth creation. I'm going to actually look at my notes a little bit because I want to make sure that I get this right so that as somebody's listening, they really start to understand what we're talking about here. And then we'll talk about the steps of the system and I'll do a little bit of teaching. So there's something called the four levels of wealth creation. It's a framework that's laid out by, I'm pretty sure Myron Golden is the one that laid it out, right? And so if you picture steps as we go through this, the bottom level is an implementation level. That's when we do work with our hands. So that can be people like maybe you're, um, maybe you're going and you're going to your barber. They're in the implementation stage. Maybe you're going and talking to your gardener. They're in the implementation stage. So in terms of like wealth creation, implementation as the lowest step it's not a good step or a bad step to be on i'm just it just goes through a step methodology so you kind of understand this it's any work that we do with our hands any work that i have to do so when i'm like working on funnels writing email copy all that kind of stuff i'm actually in the implementation phase of wealth creation now there's some interesting things that go on at the implementation stage because there's a lie that we actually believe when we're in the implementation stage stage and so we can kind of think this is actually the lie that i heard probably the most growing up from my mom and her family my grandparents and that was that hard work is the answer to make more money so you got to work harder and that's what actually makes you more money. Now, the income cap in that area, it caps out at about eighty dollars to $100,000 when you're in the implementation stage. So that's step number one. Step number two is called the unification level. And in the unification stage or in the unification level, that's where we upgrade and we're like managers of people. There's a lie that's in there that says actually more education is what makes us more money. So you go from implementation to unification. That's where managers sit. Um, and so we either have to work harder or we just manage more people. And the trick to that is this is the also for me in my household, this is the second lie that I heard that just go get more education. As soon as I was done with my bachelor's, uh, the first question my family asked me was, when are you going to go get your master's? And I was like, I just graduated college. What do you mean? Like, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, I was kind of like, girl, you need an MBA <laughs> right away, right away. And I was like, okay, so nothing against my family. That's what they were taught. So I'm not knocking them. It's just that this was the framework in which they had for their lives. This is other people taught them these things. So the cap, the income cap around the unification level is about two to 300 K. So you're doing pretty good by like the world's standard. The next level up there is communication. So that's the third step on the four levels of wealth. And that is where we're using our words to produce income. That's all your speakers, your artists, your um, performers on stage. It's when we speak any form of communication. It could be it, it's all when we use our voice to be able to create wealth. And so there's lots of uh, professions that can fall into that category. Um, what, some of the things that you want to look at there is that the cap, the income cap around there, because each one has one, the income pack cap is around, oh, maybe like six figures to about a million dollars. So if I'm going to use my voice to create income and I'm going to get on stages or do master classes or however that works out for you, then there is an income cap that happens. The fourth level of wealth creation is called imagination. This is where like you're Disney people, Steve Jobs kind of people, like conversations that Ray and I have had kind of people like this is where if you can start to see when I spend more time in the imagination stage, what happens is, is like all the boundaries start to strip off and I start to think about ways that I can create new offers because 
offer creation is actually the skill of that is it was really wealth creation. And so I'm working around ideas. So where in communication and uh, imagination, those are words and ideas. See how the income caps actually start to like fall off altogether because the highest level of wealth creation goes from about a million dollars on up. There's no cap on the high end. So the reason that I go through that is I want us to kind of open our eyes to see at any given time, at any point in our day, start to kind of think and recognize which level of wealth creation am I at on any particular step or task that I'm doing in my business. Now, again, it's not that any level is better or worse than the other, but can you see how from an income possibility, right, that when I start spending time in levels three and levels four, that all of a sudden I start using my words and I start using my mind to like expand to see what's possible. All of a sudden, like the doors just start flooding open. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you're talking about conversations you and I have had. Yeah. And I get it. I live in that imagination place where I'm always thinking yeah. about, we could do this. We could do that. We could help people with this. And I have a story. It's, it's kind of sad, but I think it's a, it's a warning. Um, my father-in-law, God rest his soul. He's with the Lord now. Yeah. Uh, I love him dearly. He was at a place in his life where he's in his seventies. He was on limited income and he, he, he came to me and talked to me about some ideas for business. He says, you do this online business stuff. How do you do it? Mm -hmm. And so I was sharing with him. He was a master woodworker. Yeah. I was sharing with him how he could not only make his pieces and sell them, which mm -hmm. he did. That was, that's, He's a maker. He's using his hands. Yeah. But he was so limited by that. I said, imagine you could teach people how to do what you do and give them your system for doing it. And you could make a lot of money. He said, like, well, how much is a lot of money? Right. And I started out telling him numbers that freaked him out. I told him, you yes. could easily make $100,000. Right away, he's like, I can't do that. We yeah. had this conversation back and forth. And he finally said to me, this makes me think of this conversation. That makes me sad all over again. He said to me, I can't do this, Ray. I said, why not? He said, I, I know how you, you have this vision of what could be. All I can see are the obstacles. Mm -hmm. And it, it held him back. I respected his wishes. I didn't talk to him about it anymore. But I felt like, so it's like you're on the edge. You're right on the edge of so much possibility, so much wealth. You yeah. go from being tight with money having wealth. So it's important, I think, for us to be aware of those four levels mm -hmm. and try to put ourselves in the highest paying level of wealth creation, if at all possible, all the time. Yeah, that's so, it's so powerful. Like as entrepreneurs, whether you have a copywriting business or business op business, like any kind of business that you have, as often as is possible, we want to try to swim around in those level three, level four activities. And that's actually what's going to explode our business. So it's not that, let me just be clear. It's not that I never do level one stuff. I'm just keenly yeah. aware of when I do. And I do one of two things. I either do it super fast and efficiently, or I try to hire somebody else and have them do it because it's not actually as the business owner, it's not usually the best use of my time. Now, sometimes when you're starting out, you have to be there and that's totally fine, but just, just plant a seed in your mind and think like, oh, wait a minute, there's something possible. Like I can actually get paid a whole lot of money just to sit out on my back porch and like think. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like I love gardening. So I can sit out in the garden. Like my brain goes crazy when I'm, you know, when I actually get the most ideas when I'm outside of my office. So it doesn't matter what yeah. I'm doing. Like yeah. I can be going on a walk. I can be gardening. I can be hanging out with my kids, going on a date with my husband, traveling. Like I can be doing all of these things. And I, I sometimes I've noticed like, it's almost like I have to have a notebook with me when I'm completely um, uh, disconnected from level one kind of activities, because then all of a sudden my mind goes, Whoa! wait a minute, yeah. what else is possible? Are you kidding me? It's, yeah. it's super exciting. Yeah. 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 And the key is you got to get out of that level one activity at some point to be yep. able to operate at that higher level. Yeah. So, level awesome. one and level two are the ones that really kind of hold us down and hold us back. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about the system. And then I love the story about your 
your father-in-law, not because of where his head was at, but because it actually is a great teaching lesson that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So really, essentially, what we want to do is when we're creating high ticket offers, there are elements that we're going to use. And there's a creation of high ticket offers that's important. There's choreography that goes into the event that's super important. And then there's a collaboration element that is very valuable because actually when we there's i just realized today i was um talking with a friend of mine and i had this quote that i thought was somebody else and she just totally clarified for me it's steve jobs who said simplicity scales and complexity fails and so i just want to give honor where honor is due i love to be able to quote somebody who's come up with a better quote than i could come up with but as you listen to the steps of the system what i want you to listen for is the simplicity that's there. So it's a five set system that we walk through. It's very straightforward and that we go ahead and we make a decision and we commit to be able to serve a specific audience, create a new offer, whatever that looks like. Then we go through the steps to create and I'll elaborate that a little bit more today. And then we have an event coming up that if it makes sense that you're going to be there with us, we'll actually unpack all of this. I'll teach you all of the steps that you can actually implement these this whole system, either inside of an existing business, layer it on top, or start a new business with the whole system. Then after we create the high ticket offer, then there's a choreograph uh, element. So when we do events, whether it's in-person or virtual events, I focus on virtual events as my specialty, like that's part of my secret sauce and my specialty. Um, there are certain things that we wanna do. The events need to run for a certain time because that warms my audience out, up. There's certain things that I wanna do in the event that overcome objections and help people to make a buying decision. There's certain things that we wanna do in our events that actually hold people all the way to the end. And so we actually go through um, all of the choreography that's super important. We also wanna make our events fun because how many of us have attended courses and seminars and webinars and stuff that is not fun and you don't want to even hang out into the end you know you get to the point where you're like i don't care what the offer is i can't i can't take it anymore so that we're not talking about that what we're talking about is how do we have fun in our businesses and fun with our clients and prospects because we learn better we all learn better when life is fun and we're actually like playing our way to our next goal so we'll talk about that a little bit more. And then the collaboration element, this is key. If you already have a converting offer and let's say you have like a small list and a small following, and you might be thinking, Anita, Ray, I don't have like these big numbers. And you can I just tell you right now, like you don't need big numbers in the room to be able to make great sales in this model. You also can collaborate with other partners because as I like to say, like having fun, like what Ray and I are doing, having fun with your friends already in business makes it so much more fun because sometimes as entrepreneurs, can't we just get, can we just admit, sometimes we just get stuck in our own way and our own mindset and our own tiny little office and our own little viewpoint. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait a minute, there's a world of people out there. Like, why don't we just go have some fun with other people like like-minded entrepreneurs that maybe share a similar audience. We can go serve them at the highest level. They can serve their audience at the highest level. We can make some money along the way. We can make a lot of money along the way with this model. Um, but the collaboration element, um, can I just admit, like I am naturally an introverted person. You might not understand that or believe that about me right now. What? I know. My husband has a kind of personality that's like booming. He's the kind of guy that like everybody, he knows everybody in any given room in like first five minutes. He knows everybody. That's but true. That's just true. He has taught me over the years, if I just actually show up and be myself and have so not try to be him, just be me just be the person that God made me to be and just show up and serve people and connect with people and have great conversations with people. That's actually where, as soon as I was able to acknowledge that for myself and lean into that more than I was like, oh, I can see how it can be so much fun to connect with all these people. Even if I'm not necessarily um, by any like personality test tagged as somebody who's super extroverted, but I know I, because I love what I'm doing, I can actually have so much more fun with it now than I could before. And so both the system has set me free and my husband has set me free. Thank you so much, Vince, for that. So T 
teaching me how to just show up and be me and not trying to be anybody else. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit of side note, but when we go through the system, so there's one more step almost forgot and that's collect. And so as we go through these five C's that I've mentioned, isn't it so important that when we run businesses that we have a system in place to be able to collect the revenue that's going to come in when you start doing high ticket offers. If you're listening right there, like start nodding your head saying yes, Anita and Ray, it's super important that we have a system to be able to collect because did you know that if you start taking like high ticket offers through your Stripe account and big dollar amounts all of a sudden, and they are not used to you having that kind of financial activity. Uh, uh, uh. Did you know that you have to have ways to actually work through that system? Because otherwise they don't know you, they don't know your offer. They don't know what you're doing. They might they're, they're just people. like this, this guy suddenly had $300,000 come through his bank account, your Stripe account this weekend. What's he doing? I know, I know, I know. So the collect part, I mean, that's actually one of my favorite parts because I'm just super nerdy in, the, in that way. Yeah. But it's fun to have a system in place that we can actually serve at the highest level, but also collect the money that's coming our way because that's part of what we're talking about here, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> I'm going to amen that one. Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so... Um, let's see here. Some of the other things that hold us back when we're talking about high ticket offers is I might think in my mind, or you might be listening and think, I'm not Ray Edwards. I'm not Anita Nello. I can't do what they're doing. I can't. I just can't. I don't know how. Can I just, um, like suspend those fears a little bit for you as we talk here. Do you know when I first started out, I did not know. When I first met Ray, he knew all about copywriting. And I was like, what is a headline, a subhead, a landing page, a, a funnel? Like I knew, I heard the words, but I had no idea what he was talking about. And I'd started dabbling around in these different online communities. I'd previously had an a different business and same thing. Like I would get so overwhelmed because I didn't know the terminology. So I couldn't, I definitely couldn't implement the steps because I didn't even understand the words that people were saying and throwing around and like, Oh, just go do this, do it. I don't know, like a one-time offer an OTO. And I was like, what the heck is that? Like, <laughs> so my brain was saying, I understand the words, but my body was saying, I don't have any idea what they're talking about. I don't know. So there's this kind of like this element that holds us back that says like, I hear what they're saying, but I can't do that. And so can we just like set somebody free and it, Ray, is it okay if we just teach on this a little bit? Because. Yeah, I think it's so important because it's, if there, if you ask me, what's the one biggest thing that holds people back? Yeah. It's the belief that they can't or won't or shouldn't do this. Yeah. So go, let's go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give like, um, I'm going to just do a teaching here. We're going to talk a little bit. There's a, uh, Russell Brunson talks about an expert secret. So I want to give credit where credit is due. And he talks about how an expert secrets, what he's doing is he laying out the, the principle that all of us at some area in our life likely have something that we're better than like 95% of the population, okay? There's also a story, there was a movie that was called Catch Me If You Can. It was Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks and they basically modeled it after this guy that was a real guy. His name was Frank Abagnale Jr. He was like a super, I don't know, super smart con artist. He did all yeah. of these things. And a lot of times what he would do is he would like reverse engineer a um, profession that he wanted to pretend that he was in. And in order to do that, like he would just study up a little bit and then he'd figure out um, some elements about that reverse engineer. And then he would like step into that role. And what's funny about that is this young kid. So like 17 years old, I think the number is, is that he was like on the FBI most wanted list. He was like the biggest forger in the entire United States history. Um, yep. he was an airplane pilot. Um, he held was different a doctor. roles, right? Doctor, lawyer, all these crazy things. And in our mind, we're like, wait a minute, what are you kidding me? Like, how did people fall for that? 
here's kind of the whole premise is that he would always say like when he was finally caught, I think it was like a sociology professor at BYU and the authorities come to grab him and they're like, how did you possibly do this? And he's like, oh, it's easy. I just had to stay one chapter ahead. So when you think about this and you start to kind of like put this in perspective of what we're talking about, let's look at it a different way. What about like the guru on the mountain? Like if you're down here and this is you like, let's say five years ago. So if I'm down here and I'm a, let's call her, let's do it this way. Susie Bell is a person and she's down here at the bottom. And then Ray Edwards as a copywriter, he's like one of the best in the world. But can you see how if Susie Bell compares herself to Ray, she's like, I can't do that. I can't charge what he charges. I'm not that kind of expert, but she doesn't need to worry about being Ray Edwards. What she needs to worry about is actually where she was five years ago and go back and serve that kind of person. So a lot of times we get caught up in this. Well, I'm not like the guru on the mountain. You can fill in any guru you want. Whoever is like the person that you aspire to be. If that's Ray, that's amazing. He is amazing at what he does. It could be Tony Robbins. It could be anybody. It doesn't matter. The idea is that what happens is we start to kind of acknowledge that I'm actually not at this spot I was five years ago. I'm somewhere in the middle. So in our um, illustration, I wish I had a whiteboard right now. It'd be so fun to like draw this out. In my illustration down at the bottom, Susie Bell is like, that's who she was five years ago. Then she's worked her way up. Anita's worked her way up, taken the 20 plus years of consulting experience and remodeled that, learned some things about that and has improved her skill set around speaking and high ticket offer creation and virtual events. And so I'm not at the expert level of like the people that I look up to my mentors yet, but I actually have come a long way. And so one of the things that we want to think about is um, we want to identify like where we are on that mountain. We don't have to be at the top, but we also can recognize that we actually have come farther than we were just a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, um, some of the things that I like to do with clients and as, I, as you're listening right now, maybe in like whip out a piece of paper and like take some notes because this is going to be one of those like writer downer kind of exercises. And it's just I'm super practical and tactical. I love to be able to give people steps so they can just take one step forward. So if you start jotting down the number of courses that you've taken, let's just say in the last five years. If you start jotting down and whatever that number is, just fill it in. If you start jotting down the number of seminars that you've been to, um, start jotting down like the number of books that you've read, start jotting down like the number of experience, the years of experience that you've had in any given profession. And you start making these mental notes of like, well, okay, Anita, like I've done this and I've read this and I've gone to this seminar and I've gone to this course. And then maybe add on top of that, maybe you have like higher education. Maybe you even paid for that higher education yourself. And if you were like me, like you paid maybe $100,000 or maybe you're like the students, like my daughter who's in college right now. And if she wants to go to Harvard, it's like $400,000 for her to attend an Ivy League school. So no matter where you are, can you start to kind of mentally calculate your taking inventory of the experience that you already have in life and the courses and books and all this kind of stuff that I mentioned. And you're starting to write that down. Now, the flip side of it is what would be the value that you could bring somebody else to get them out of that spot, get them unstuck. If you're stuck at 10 to 20 K a month, let man, let's get you unstuck so that you can just go and have like that hockey event in your, uh, well, that's what Ray and I call it. It's like a hockey event in your, on your P and L your revenue event that happens where like, woof, oh my gosh, it seemed like overnight, but it was years in the making that all of a sudden money started coming in. So. We'll break that down a little bit further. The other thing that we kind of get stuck on is we might be thinking, well, I can't speak like she speaks. So I'm already like a self-acknowledged, like introverted person. But don't you know that speaking at the level that we're talking about and working in those higher levels of wealth creation, those are just skills. So if that's something that's hanging you up, wait till the end. I'll, I'll just share with you. I actually have a something I want to share with you that's called the Elite Speaker Secrets that I'll give you when you, um, if you're interested in joining the event that Ray and I are having. So see how when we start to recognize where we are, the experience that we have, maybe the, the pain, and I, I mean, I don't know, I've spent like, can I just say, like hundreds of thousands of dollars in masterclasses, I mean masterminds, 
and lots of money on education, lots of money on books, lots of money on experience. And if I can save somebody like, I don't know, three years and $300,000 in their business to not make the same mistakes that I've made, wouldn't there be value that's associated with that? Heck yes. Uh, right? it's, it's a matter of choices that we make in life. Jim Rohn used to say, uh, poor people have big TVs, rich people have big libraries. <laughs> so true. it's investing in the knowledge that gets you where you want to go. And there's, we talked about reading thousands of books. I have too. I've spent, honestly, I did this recently. I've calculated how much I've spent in self-education, masterminds, mm -hmm. classes, seminars, experiences. I've spent over a million dollars yeah. on that stuff. And it's been extraordinarily valuable. Yes. Wouldn't, yes. wouldn't, wouldn't change the thing about it. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, you go into one of those programs, it's not guaranteed. You know, they give you the same guarantee you get from Harvard or Yale or Princeton. Yeah. yeah. If you do something with this knowledge, the world is available to you. I you know. do nothing with it, you get nothing. I know. I know. Isn't it interesting that even like scripture says that where our treasure is, there our heart is. So when we invest at a really high level, to learn any kind of skill set that'll level us up in our business. Can you see how we show up differently? So oh, you yeah. may have just heard Ray and thought, million dollars, that's crazy. I heard that and I was like, oh, that's so exciting. That's so much more exciting to me than I previously understood about Ray because then I know when it comes to Ray, he's invested the time so that in my business and because we're friends, like I can have one conversation that could totally change my business and like radically shave off, I don't know, 10 years and maybe a million dollars of trying out other things because yep. he's already had the experience. So the value that we are talking about, the value that we bring to the table for our clients as we create these high ticket offers is actually it's tangible. It's really tangible. So we're not pretending like we're just assigning random dollar amounts to offers or educate. No, it's not in that. It's prescriptively and with simplicity, we are creating, we have a system that helps us implement it in our business and then go and do amazing things. And then also we have the ability to just recognize that when we invest in time and money, then that actually expands our world by ways that we couldn't do on our own. Can I just help us understand some, uh, some things? When I work on my own, and I just try to read a book. I love books. I totally, like I, I have Ray, all of Ray's books in my bookshelf. I love them all. But can I say that when I get caught up in my own thoughts and my own mind and my own little um, boundaries that I've set for myself, if I don't actually engage and have a conversation with Ray or anybody else and like try to expand my mind, then I'm actually doing myself a disservice um, because what ha happens is I can only take myself so far. My mind's can only my mind can only go so far. I need other people. I need other resources. I need other systems around me to help make me aware of what I'm not even aware of, and that actually helps me expand and walk more in the things that I believe that God's called all of us to be able to walk in. Amen. I yeah. This, I get so jazzed up by conversations like this because all of the most valuable learning for me that has happened in my career as an entrepreneur has been in when I invest some uncomfortable amount of money, time, and energy in getting to a new level. And it usually means getting into a room, whether it's virtual or physical, getting into a room yeah. with people who are thinking at a higher level than me. That's right. Caused me to raise my standards and think bigger because I just I if you surround yourself with people who are thinking at the lower level, it doesn't make them worth less as people. You still love those people. Mm -mm. But if you're looking to expand your achievement, you've got to get in an environment where people can raise you up to a new standard. There's a scripture that says, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another or one woman 
Yeah. And it's, it's, you need yeah. that, you need that iron sharpens iron approach. So important. Right. Yeah. So good. So good. So TG Jakes has a story that he likes to tell when he's speaking and it's called giraffes and turtles. And essentially what he's talking about is exactly what you're discussing, right? Is that, can you understand like a giraffe and a turtle out in the wild, they can occupy pretty much on the ground, kind of like the same space, but their perspective is completely different. Mm. So a giraffe who has like a 25 pound heart, a nine foot neck to be able to pump the blood all the way up to its brain and its perspective is very different than the turtle that is eating from the ground and sitting down on the ground. And so we actually have giraffes and turtles in our lives. This is how people are actually seen because we have these different um, perspectives, these different viewpoints on life. So even though um, the turtles in our lives, those are like the, I just love them, but they might be the naysayers in your life that say, you can't possibly do this. You can't possibly afford this. You, I know who you used to be, Anita. You can't possibly do that. You can't charge that much or you right? All the things that people say, you can't start a podcast. You can't show up live. Like I knew who you used to be. What would make you think if I, oh, and the, my favorite one, my least favorite one, but my favorite one all at the same time is, well, if I were you, I would, and they'd fill in the blank and you're like, please don't ever say that to me because you're not yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't ask for that. Um, it's, but, I mean, it is, it is a huge, for a lot of folks, it's a big barrier. And it doesn't have to be. The sooner you can break through that barrier, the sooner you can get to the level of success that you've dreamed of. I I have I have this story about investing that is it was a turning point in my life. Mm-hmm. It was a few years ago, a few, and I was being coached by somebody who's well known. You probably know their name if I told you who it was. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to him about he had recommended I sell a $25,000 program. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, okay, that's exciting. I I was all jazzed about it. Like I can sell 10 of those. That's a quarter of a million dollars. Right. Um, It's better to sell a quarter of a million dollar program. I'll just throw that out there. But um, he, so I, I, I did it. I made the offer and nothing. Oh no. And I went back and I said, this didn't work. He said, okay. And he looked at my copy, looked at my funnel, talked to me about how was, what the system of selling was. He said, well, I have a question for you. Have you ever invested in a $25,000 program? Mm-hmm. And I said, no, man, I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> he said, that's your problem. Yeah. Until you invest in something at that level, you're, you're never going to sell something at that level, or it's going to be very difficult if you do. Yeah. yeah. And he, I went out and enrolled immediately in his $25,000 thing. Of course. Of course. But it changed everything. Yes. It, it uh, Suddenly, I was closing deal after deal after deal yeah. with almost no effort compared to how it was before. Because yeah. I had a different perspective. Right. Isn't that so cool? So like in the story with T.D. Jakes, he talked about we eat. I just want to get this quote. He, we eat on the level of our vision. So think about the oh. story that Ray just told and think about you can if, even if giraffes and turtles are totally silly to you, you can understand conceptually in your mind. A turtle is down here. A giraffe is up here. So we're not going to listen to the turtles when they say uh, you can't do this because they just don't they're not wrong in their perspective. But that who we were is not who we are today. Sometimes Mm. can we say that the vision that God has given me, I know for my business to reach 100,000 women, and that's going to impact a million lives. Like I know that I can say those words to other people, but nobody knows it like I do because I was given the vision of the things that I'm supposed to do in my life. So even though I share them with like, I live with like the biggest group of cheerleaders on the planet in my own household, they are constantly telling me, babe, you're doing amazing. Go mom. You can do this. They understand when I say big things, but they also don't understand. Now they don't hold me back or anything like that. So if you have people in your lives that are eating on a lower level, um, 
just recognize that they might not necessarily understand your vision that's way up here. That's okay. You just get in the room with other people that understand your vision. And what Ray was talking about is spot on. They'll pull you up so that you can actually walk out the destiny that we combined, we believe that you are already meant to walk out. And so we just want to encourage you on your way when you're when you're figuring out the next step, like this is the next step. Like go ahead and take the next step. It's a thing. Did yeah. you also know, Ray, like we you and I have been talking about this lately. I love this. So little Bible lesson for everybody. And I'm just going to kind of be quick about it. So there is a passage in second Kings four that's mm. talking about Elisha and a widow. And it's, it's okay if I just read this real quick, because it's, mm -hmm. Come on. Like, it's a little bit bigger. So there was a widow in great debt and she was concerned that a creditor would take her two sons to be bondsmen. And I'm just reading it word for word. Cause I always want to make sure that I get God's word. Correct. I don't want to add anything to it or take anything away from it. So they approached Elisha for help. And Elijah, if you're not familiar with him, he was a prophet. So when he asked uh, if she owned anything, the widow um, of value, she replied that she only had a pot of oil. Elijah instructed the widow to borrow as many vessels as possible from all her neighbors. She poured her small amount of oil into each vessel. Each of them remained full. When she told Elisha of the miracle, he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt and you and your children should live from the rest. So don't, why would I actually talk about that in the context of what we're discussing here? Because there's really actually five principles that come out of scripture that I'm going to tell you that might actually like blow your mind. Because I know sometimes in the church, we have this idea that somehow it's like more holy to be poor. Let me just tell you, that's not what the Bible says. Like you can go research it for your own, but I'm going to go and teach on a couple of quick things here on this passage. So really what is happening is Elisha is telling the widow, he's saying, go use what's in your hand already. So you might be thinking, I'm not the Ray Edwards of the world. I'm not the Brendan Bashar, or the Tony Robbins, or again, whoever your Russell Brunson, whoever your guru actually is. But the word says, the principle is, is go use what's in your hand. Another way we can translate that in like modern vernacular is go take the experience that you already have, that you're already good at, that you already love to deliver and go do something with that. The second principle that God tells us in his word, this is where it's going to throw you for a loop, is he says, go and borrow. What? I know. Somebody's but the borrower is slave to the lender. I know. I, uh, yeah, I know unless, that we have. Unless they're not. I know that we have a lot of misconceptions about money in our minds that are not actually true. I'm just going to put it that way. And I mean that in the most loving way possible. But this is God's words that's telling us, go use what's in your hand, then go borrow. The third principle that we're taking out of this is he says, Elisha tells the widow, go and sell. So isn't that so cool? Because we're in this sales market. I believe that selling is like some of the purest forms of love because I'm going actually out and serving people by doing for them what they can't do for themselves. So I love that. I, I used to not like selling at all. And now that I see it that way, I've had this shift in my perspective. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you kidding? I can radically change somebody's life and help them put a six and seven figure month or day in their business. And it'll change the entire trajectory of their bloodline. Are you kidding me? Like, of course, I'm going to go love them at the purest level. So third concept, third principle is go and sell. The fourth principle that we pull out of the scriptures is to pay off the debt. So it does not say swim around in a whole bunch of debt, but it does say go pay off the debt. And then the fifth principle is live on the rest. Can you see how the abundance is coming in from God's word? He's telling us go borrow, go sell, go pay off the debt, and then live on the rest. That means live in the overflow, live in the abundance, live in there's so much coming in that there's more than enough left over. See, I believe so strongly that there is, I'm just, I'm so passionate about this. There's more than enough high ticket buyers for me. There's more than enough high ticket buyers for Ray. There's more than enough high ticket buyers for every one of you that's listening with more than enough left over. We will actually, I have a friend of mine. She says this all the time. She's like, Anita, 
I'm going to have, there's going to be so many high ticket buyers that I won't even be get to, be able to get to by the time I get to Jesus, even if I'm serving as many people as I possibly can at the highest level possible. And I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. It's so true. If you, if you listen too much to the industrial news complex, mm -hmm. you'll get told a narrative that everybody's broke. The economy yeah. is collapsing. Not true. And I would recommend, I'll just throw in my little two cents here. A little two cents is worth $2 billion. Yeah. Um, go get a magazine called the Rob report oh, yeah. and read it. I, I love doing things that help me build my dreaming capacity. Mm -hmm. And this report has mansions that are for sale around the world, how much they cost. It's yeah. got experiences you can have, like go rent a villa in or a castle in Scotland and have eight of your friends come. It's yeah. all these adventures you go on. Mm -hmm. It's it's like $3 million. Now think about this. There are people in the world who are buying that vacation and the, the amount of money that you just invested in that experience was not even a rounding number, a rounding error on their balance sheet. Yeah. Those people exist. Yeah. They're all over. There's more. Do you know? Oh, this is so cool. Um, so as of... Is it? I got to get this right. 2023, 2024. As of, I think the end of 2023, there's 22 million millionaires in the United States. Hello. Come on. I know. I was reading a book by Dan Kennedy that's called The No uh, BS, no Guide. BS to Guide to Marketing to the Affluent. There we go. So that, that the copy that I have was published in like 2000, I think 18 or so were those numbers, maybe, maybe before COVID and then there was like 16 million. So I was like, I got to look that up. I got to see what the current number is. So 22 million millionaires, that is not the, that's the affluent. It's not the ultra affluent. It's not the, it's not right. the wealthy, not the rich. Like that's the baseline number of how many of these buyers that we're actually talking about. And there's more on top of that. So, yeah. And if you, can go, if you can go find those buyers and build a business, here is my point I was driving at. You could become the person yeah. who pays the $3 million and brings your friends sure. to Scotland. That let's do it is exciting. I know that's so, that's so fun. That's so fun. Okay. Well, Let's talk about what the next steps are. Let's do it. We're going to wrap this up a little bit here. So um, how many of you have like tried to get your six and seven figure days in your business, but it, you're just the, what you've experienced is maybe getting stuck at 10 to 20 K months. So as you're listening today, just kind of, we're just going to break some things off of you and set you free. And then if it makes sense, we'll invite you into a, uh, we call it just a money party, a fun event that Ray and I are hosting on August 8th. So I know that there was one time that I was spinning my wheels, totally stressed out. If I tack on to the story that I started earlier, my husband, Vince, and I, we went through these challenging times, right? We went from marriage upset to medical crisis to, I don't know if I shared it with you guys or not, but when my husband was in the hospital, I received a call from his business partner and he informed me that the business was not doing well and actually his payroll would stop that Friday. So I'm pretty sure that was a Wednesday. So can I just tell you almost like overnight, our income got completely cut off. And I was, at that time I was trying to figure out like, how do I just do a six figure year, much less anything other than that. And right, I had this, I had this things going on in my household. Like I needed a way to figure out how to get out of this mess, how to care for my children in a way that still gave me a lot of time and money, freedom to homeschool my kids and all this kind of stuff. I knew something needed to change. So I kind of went on a journey. And in that journey, I started creating my first high ticket offer where the value that I brought to my client in one conversation, can I just tell you how amazing that was? In one conversation, the value that I offered to this client was so amazing. It actually saved him millions of dollars in his business to pay me. He paid me over 600 K in that offer. And it was, uh, one excuse me, how much he paid you? How much over 600 K in that high ticket offer? 
that brought hundred thousand dollars. It brought his business race so much value. It saved them years of struggle and millions of dollars in revenue, lost revenue that they had before they met me. Come on. I know. So I knew in that moment, like I needed a way to replicate that because the delivery mechanism in that high ticket offer. So I was making a lot of money, but I was doing all the work and that got to be a little bit of a strain on me and just my health and my energy level. And again, like homeschooling my kids and trying to take care of my husband. Like we had all these things. So I knew I needed to take that next step. And that's why I created the elite entrepreneur events formula system. So what we're going to do on August 8th, Ray and I are hosting, co-hosting an event um, at 11 a.m. Central Time. VIP ticket holders can come on in. And really what we're going to do is we're going to have like a half day masterclass where we're going to go deep into helping you get past being stuck at that 10 to 20 K month. Maybe with like those long, exhausting delivery timeframes, maybe you have an offer, but it takes you, I don't know, lots of hours every week or all year long to be able to deliver that. We're going to break through some of those things. Maybe you're stuck on like waking up an audience and a following. We'll help you get unstuck there. Maybe you're stuck on the pain. Can somebody say pain of running like Facebook ads that don't convert all that kind of stuff. So during the masterclass, I'm going to teach you how to break through all of those challenges and you can take your copywriting or entrepreneurial skills and I'll show you how to create six and seven figure days through virtual events. That's all okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds fantastic. I just want to make sure we address this. I know this question is coming up a lot. Yes. The, to the person who's watching and listening, they're getting excited, getting their hopes up. Good. Get your hopes up. But maybe thinking inside, I'm not sure what I would even have to offer somebody mm. that they, could, they would pay these big dollars for. Yeah. Can you just riff on that just a little bit? Because I know you've got something to say. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So one of the pillars that we talk about in the system and what I teach in the masterclass is how to create what I call a dynamite high ticket offer. That can be for copywriting, coaching, consulting, any area in your business. There are, there's a couple of elements that are super key to these offers. And we go through all of this in the masterclass. There's as a matter of fact, when you attend, I'll go through the do you know there's actually five specific elements that have to be in every high ticket offer, um, not only for them to convert, but also for your high ticket buyers to recognize that that's something that they would be interested in having a conversation with and buying. Because see the common in the high ticket space, here's what's going on, Ray. It's not only that I'm offering value at a really high level, but it's also that I'm attracting the right kind of buyer. See, the buyer that I'm attracting with my copy and my landing page and my offer at 297, their expectations are very different than what our high ticket clients are expecting. So we need to change the offer such that and have these five elements in it. Um, I'll just kind of tease that up. We're going to go and unpack all of those elements so that you really truly understand what we're going to do in the masterclass is you will actually be able to craft out your entire high ticket offer in this small window of time. And then you can run it in your business. You can go ahead and take the system, walk away from the masterclass and be like, Anita, Ray, that was amazing. I can do something with this right now. One of the things that I absolutely cannot stand my personal peeve is when I attend an event or a masterclass or, in a, or a course or a whatever, a mastermind, and I walk away with more head knowledge and more notes. Can I just say, that's not this experience. What we're gonna do is practical and tactical. We're gonna teach you the elements that need to be in every high ticket offer so that you have something that you can actually walk away from the event from and, and start testing it out. Yes. Yeah. That is it. That this... This is the way to live. This is the way to do business. And uh, I just encourage you to VIP is where it's at. So you need to get in the VIP for this event. I'm going to be there. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, and I'm look, friends, you know me. I'm a constant eternal student. I never, I have this belief. Once you decide you know everything, you've decided where to level off. Oh, I ain't leveling I, off. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to continue to go. And I'll just share one more, this is one more vision of what could be. 
I fairly recently had two different clients. One client is from a previous era in my business mm -hmm. where I had not charged him very much money mm -hmm. for what he, what he was buying. Yeah. And in fact, it was about $15,000. Mm. And um, I have another client who, ironically, I had charged him 10 times that amount, mm -hmm. $150,000. And I had this endless, torturous experience with the $15,000 guy yeah. who just was a pain in my rump roast. Yes. Can I say that? The $150,000 guy, I started getting nervous because I hadn't heard from him in a while. I called him, said, hey, is there anything I can do for you? He said, do for me. You've already done it. I said, we've had three phone conversations. He said, that's all I needed. That's all I needed. Yeah. Worth, he said it was worth $14 million to me. Yes. You can do this. Yes. And you want to do this because it's a better world to live in. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And so the principle that you're talking about, Ray, is it's not that one person is a higher or lower caliber of a person or character at totally, all. Totally. You're right. You're right. But the, but the, the, the mindset and the activity high ticket buyers come to us with a different expectation and the expectation is they're going to do the bulk of the work you're going to help set them free by your system whatever that looks like and then they're actually going to go take the responsibility extreme responsibility for themselves and their business and they're going to go and implement it because they know that they know that they know when they go to experts like us who are implementing systems and doing this and having lots and lots of success with other clients like you and I have both have, then all of a sudden what's going to happen is they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I better pay attention. So people that pay, I think it's, let's see, is it Russell or is it Tony Robbins that says people that pay, pay attention. Right. Yeah. And so and the people that pay the most, pay the most attention. That's right. That's right. So that's what we're talking about here. It's using our copywriting skills, using our entrepreneur skills, layering in high ticket offers and virtual events. We have tons of testimonies that we're going to share when you come to the event. Now, here's actually kind of an interesting thing. We're going to cover a couple other items other than just the, um, in addition to um, teaching you how to create and write your own high ticket offer. I'll show you how to collaborate with partners to explode your audience. I'll also go through and share with you uh, how to craft your the choreography and the content for your events that actually moves your clients to a buying decision also so we can have so much more fun in the process because isn't that what this is all about we don't just want to have like dry boring events that sometime later everybody's like i'm asleep when you pitch me the offer <laughs> those, are, those are no fun for your clients and or your prospects and they're no fun for us as the deliverers either <laughs> yep for sure i have a mentor who said to me one time Remember, Ray, the mind cannot absorb what the butt cannot endure. You got to get people up and have them have some fun while they're at your event. I have heard you say that before. Okay, so what's super cool is we've, we've thrown out some big numbers here. Don't be afraid. What we're talking about is um, a lot of times these masterclass events or an event that you go to, especially if you try to go in person, a lot of times those events might be, let's just say they're like $1,000 and you have to travel to go to get there. So maybe when you're traveling to the place and you're playing, paying to be in the event, you might be running a, a bill of like $1,500 or $2,000. But what Ray and I have come up with is because we're doing this event virtually, and again, it's August 8th, the VIP hour starts at 11 o'clock. You'll be in a private VIP room where you can get all of your questions answered. So come ready with your questions about listening to this presentation, whether you're watching it live or listening to it on the recording and then come ready with your um, your uh, questions written down because we'll answer and tackle all of those questions. So essentially what we're doing, because we're doing it virtually, we've come up with an offer for you for the VIP day of just, or for the VIP hour of just $47 for the entire event. So you're gonna wanna be in that VIP room um, because that's where you get all your questions answered. 
you have interaction with Ray and I as we're doing that. I'm teaching a big chunk of it. I have some other expert friends that are going to come join Ray and I. Ray's teaching a component in there. It's going to be so much fun. We can't wait. It's going to be such a party. Think of it as like put it on your calendar, register for the event. It's going to be one of those things that you're not going to miss because this time that you spend with us is going to unlock things, something so big inside of you that you're going to see things that you can't unsee any longer. And all of a sudden you'll have a different perspective of what's possible in your business. And it's going to be so exciting. The other thing that I want to offer to your audience, Ray, just as a bonus is if someone books in for the VIP ticket today, I will gift them with my elite speaker secrets. And that just helps with the skill set of being able to speak and move audiences uh, uncover like those internal objections, the external objections that all of our minds go through. Those ones that say like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if my husband's going to say yes to this. Like we want to be able to help you to deliver in a massive way on your virtual events. And so one of the things I'm going to gift the audience with is um, this expert, uh, sorry, elite speakers secrets. I will, as you're wrapping up this last little thing, I'm going to drop the link in the chat and we'll make sure that we'll include that also in the show notes. So any last parting thoughts as we wrap up here? Uh, just do this. Um, we want you to come hang out with us and be part of the money party. Expand your thinking. You're going to get yeah. practical, actionable steps you can take. As Anita has already alluded to, there's going to be some special guest appearances and it's not it's not for naught they're going to teach you some powerful lessons you're going to be able to take this and turn this into more cash for your business and more time for you to live your life with the people you love the most yeah and i'm so excited about that so find the link in the beneath the, the video or the audio depending yeah. on where you're listening to this or watching it click it get in the vip and we will see you there yeah sounds so good thanks everybody God bless you Ah.